Welcome to session 5. In this session we will talk about three techniques you can use to extend the capabilities of your chatbot. We'll talk about associations, search and memory. Associations are just a way to convert one thing into another. Most of you have seen diagrams like this growing up. You normally draw lines across and this associates something on the left with something on the right. Everything on the left, each one, has got one thing on the right. You don't get repeats on the left either. Diagrams like these are called associations. And in particular, this association has got a name as well, and we could say it's feet, because the numbers represent the number of feet for the animals on the left. Let's see how we can use this idea in our chatbots. Now I've got here a type called animal with a few things. I define an association called feet. You use the ASOC word followed by the name. You must include the space as usual. I then have something on my right and something on my left. In this case, the left item, like duck, which is a thing, is connected with a number. So that's the same for rabbit, which is connected to four, and chicken, which is connected to two, and horse, which is connected to four. All of these links or associations must be between the double curly brackets, opening and closing, in red. Lastly, you need to add these links to the association called feet. So we use a plus feet. There is no space between the plus and the feet. We normally use the results of an association within an answer. Here, the answer should say, animal, like a horse, has four feet. So to get that number four and to display it correctly, we use something called a smart context. That's within the dollar sign bracket, and then it's ended also by another curly bracket. Within that is where you ask your association to generate a number. If the animal is horse, the association feet will respond with a number four. If it's duck, it will respond with a number two. Let's see how this works in practice. We have the microtopic here, and let's say the user asks for horse. Clearly, the chatbot responds with horse, because horse is an animal, has four feet. The f number four is retrieved by the association feet. Don't confuse the feet which is in white and the feet which is in yellow. The feet in white is a literal. The feet in yellow is an association because it's within a smart context. If he asks for pony, now pony is a kind of horse according to our types and so the chatbot will respond with pony has four feet and this is correct. If the user asks for alligator which is an animal according to us but not in the association the chatbot will respond with an IDK. How do we fix this? Well, what we do is we check the association to see if it's producing an IDK. And if it is, then we give out a response indicating that we don't have information. We do that using a guard. So in this example, animal feet will respond with IDK if animal is alligator because alligator is an animal, but it isn't in our feet association. So it responds with an IDK. The IDK is checked with IDK question mark. Now, if this is true, in other words, if the response is an IDK, then this answer is given out to the user. If it's not an IDK, then the next response, which is the final answer, is given. Let's move on to another idea. A search is something that matches keywords in some text. Let's say I have a list of pithy sayings. So what I want to do is for my chatbot 
to somehow pick up sayings from this list. Let's say the user asks, I want some fun. And let's suppose that fun is a keyword that we recognize. We want to identify fun in the list of text. So in this case, you've got two sentences which have fun in them. And you want to pick one of them at random and you want the chatbot to send this to the user. How do we do this? Well, we use searches for this. We have a keyword type defined and keyword has many things. So these keywords are the kinds of things that we want to respond to when the user asks a question. We define a search called why sayings. So the same format as associations, but we call it search instead of associations. The difference is we still have the double curly brackets, but instead of having two items per line, we only have one item in this case per line because a search is not an association. We want to add all these sayings into our search database. So we have a template with a rule that matches the keyword. And then the answer uses a smart context to grab that keyword and then ask the search database to find a matching piece of text which contains that keyword. For this to work, every keyword should appear at least once in your search list. What if you want to match two keywords instead of just one? It's easy as well. Here I've set it up so the template extracts X and Y as references, and they're both constrained to be keywords. The only difference is that instead of passing just the X or the Y, I pass them on as a list with two items. If you have three keywords, it'll be a list of three items and so on. you can combine searches with associations to create very powerful chatbots. Let me show you how. Let's say we are trying to create a book recommendation chatbot and the keywords are things like mystery, thriller, romance, or adventure. These are things and the keyword is a type. And we define both a search called genre and an as association called IDs and title. So we need two associations, not just one. This list of texts in the genre search list are combinations of keywords that we're looking for. Now what we do is we want to map each one of these pieces of text to a unique ID. So here I've used an association called IDs, and IDs map the text to a number. Next, I have an association called title, which maps the ID to the title of the book. To use this, I have a template which extracts the keyword and uses a smart context now, in the smart context, X would be the keyword. So that could be mystery, thriller, romance, or adventure, and so on. Now, when that's passed on to genre, genre comes back with one of the combinations that's available in the search list. If X were mystery, then genre could be either mystery thriller one or mystery thriller two. Let's say it's mystery thriller one. When that is passed to IDs, IDs would give you one. And when one is passed to title, title would extract the first title, which is Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Let's move on to our final technique, and that is memory. And memory is really what helps your chatbot remember the past. It makes your chatbot stateful. Consider this very simple template. This is a catch-all and all it does is just to say hello, no matter what you say. So if the user asks, how are you? The response is hello. Do you understand? It's still hello and so on. 
Now, if you want to vary this response, you can use memory. So what we do is we define a memory that's MEM colon and that defines the memory item. So in this case, it's called counts. And what we do is in the answer, we use a smart context just to recall the current counts. So if counts is one, it'll be hello one. If counts is two, it'll be hello two. And we use a special K rule where we increment the counts using a plus counts in a guard. Let's see how this works. At the very start, when the memory item counts is created, it is given a value of one. So when the user asks, how are you? The bot responds with hello one, because counts is one. But at the end of that interaction, counts would have been incremented by one by the K rule. When the user asks, do you understand, counts is two. So the bot responds with hello two. At the end of that interaction, counts is three because it has been incremented by the K rule. And this goes on. It's possible to use associations with memory to help your chatbot give you interesting responses. Let's say I have a memory item called counts, an association called greeting. Greeting connects numbers with a response. In my rule, what I do is I have a smart context, and that smart in that smart context, I extract the counts and I feed it into greeting. So if counts were one, one greeting will give me hello. If counts were two, two greeting will give me yes. 3 greeting would give me sorry, I don't understand. And the K rule again increments the counts. So at the start, count is 1. When the user asks, how are you? The chatbot responds with hello. Counts is incremented. So when the user asks again, do you understand? Or says anything else for that matter? It will say yes, which is the next item in the association. Counts is incremented to three. And no matter what the user says, it will go on to say the next item in the greeting. Now, what happens when counts is four? Well, because this is not in the association, it will respond with an IDK. Use this technique sparingly because it tends to make your code hard to understand. Lastly, let's look at how we can combine searches with associations and memory. As an example, let's go back to our book chatbot. And again, we have the keywords. Now, we have the same uh, search and associations, but we have an additional association this time, and it's the author, not just the title. And we have also a memory item called ID. I'll show you shortly why this is required. As usual, we have the genre search and we have the ID search as before and we have the two associations which translate the ID to something like a title or an author. The template we have now is a little more complex. The rule extracts the keyword from what the user is saying. The answer has got a guard and the guard first decides what the genre is going to be, which could be Mystery Thriller 1 or Romance Adventure 2. And from there, we retrieve the ID for that line and we store it using the ID exclamation mark. So exclamation mark means store. And this stores data into the memory item. And what we do is, in the body of the answer, we have got two smart contexts. In the first one, we retrieve the ID and we ask what is the title for that ID. And similarly, in the second smart context, we retrieve the same ID and we feed it into author to get the author for that book. 
This is a more complex technique, but it's quite useful. Please complete the lab for session 5 and the exercises. Good luck.